Hello, everybody, and welcome to part two of our inspection workflows work through here. In our last video, mentioned below, what we did was we took a look at how we can make a, a layer and a table, link them together in a relationship class, and publish it into ArcGIS Online. Now what we're going to do is we're going to build a web map with it and configure its pop-up and its symbology. But before we even get into that, I want to highlight a point that uh, a number of people will ask questions about is, what if I forgot to add a field before we did the publication? Luckily, we can deal with that. Let's go ahead and dive into ArcGIS Online. So here I am, I'm within my content, within my organization, and I can see my layer here for hydrant inspections. I'm gonna jump inside of it, and what I'll do is I'll click on the data tab. This is where I can actually see all of the information that's been collected within this layer. And in particular, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump into the hydrant inspections table that's included in this data set. Now, here's the thing. I've made some changes since that last video, but they're quite simple. The first is I actually collected two inspections for this. Don't worry, you're gonna to get to see how to do that in part three of our videos. Uh, and this is gonna help illustrate some symbology power later on. Um, but I also added in some extra fields. Now, let's say you forgot to add a field. Maybe it's just a generic field asking whether maintenance is, is required, yes or no. Let's see how we can set that up. Well, within here, what I'll do is I'll click on fields in the upper right-hand corner, and I'll say to add a field. And we'll just call this uh, maintenance required. And I'll leave the rest of it as is. And just like that, I've now added a new field to my data set. Now, maybe I want to give people the option of doing like a, a yes, no drop down, forcing them to choose one of those particular answers. So what I'll do is I'll actually click into that field, maintenance required, and I'll say create list. And I'll make my first value be yes and yes. And then I'll add another one for no and no. And just like that, I now have created um, a yes or no options for when someone goes to fill this out later on. Again, we're going to see this um, in the next uh, part of this uh, multi-part series. But anyways, that's how we can add a new field to our table as well as give it kind of these drop down values. This is going to be great for field data collection as we're going to see when we get to field maps. All right, so maybe before we start to symbolize our map and, and do all these kind of fancy good things, we wanted to make sure we got our data nice and cleaned up. Great, we're there, let's roll. So I have my layer, let's go ahead and add this into a map. So there's like 50 different ways I swear you can do this. I'm just gonna click on the dot, dot, dot and say add to new map directly across from my hydrant inspections layer. So it's gonna be a brand new map and it's gonna throw in my hydrants layer as well as it's also gonna throw in my hydrant inspections table. And I'm going to zoom into my little corner of the world over here in Illinois. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, you know, start to clean this up a bit. I'm gonna rename my hydrant inspections here by clicking on the dot, dot, dot. And I'm gonna say rename, and this is just gonna be hydrants. And then we do the same thing here, dot, dot, dot. And I'm gonna make this just hydrant inspections. Always good to rename your layers and here you can put in spaces. Okay, great. I now have my uh, two layers in the map and they have better names. What happens if I go in here and I click on one of these hydrants? Well, you can see my, uh, well, I got quite, quite, a, quite a bunch of fields here. I don't want all this information. Maybe I just want to know the, uh, the type of hydrants and the asset ID and, you know, I don't know, manufacturer, the install date. We can clean up this pop-up and make it look a lot cleaner. So I'm going to go into my hydrants layer. That's the thing that's on the map, my dots that I can see. And I'll press the dot, dot, dot. And I'll go into configure pop-up. And in here, what I'll do is I'll change my list of field of attributes, which is just kind of that, you know, that really long list of all the attributes, many of which I don't even care about um, or need to display at the presence to my audience. So I'm going to change my display here to be a custom attribute display. And then I get this big green button. If I click on it, this will gives me a, a very simple word processor that I can use to build my own custom pop-up. So what I'll do is I'll say for my hydrant here, we'll say this is a you know, type. I can put in some static text that doesn't change. And then I can pull on dynamic values that change based upon which feature I click on inside of my curly cube brackets here. So I'll pull on my asset type, which is the actual type of hydrant. And then if I want to, I can, I can make this fancy. You know, I can change colors. I can make it bold. I can underline it. You name it. So we'll make this bold for the type. 
And then what we'll do is we'll pull in uh, install date. And then again, I can pull on my dynamic values over here. And then lastly, I'll put in my asset ID. I can pull on that attribute as well. I make the text bold. And I was just using control B to make those bold, but you can certainly press the button up there as well. And then I'll press OK. And then I'll press OK again. And now if I click on a hydrant, I only see the three attributes that I care about. All right, that's a lot cleaner or however many attributes it is you want to show. Customize it a little bit or configure it to fit your needs. Okay, well now what I want to do is I want to symbolize this a little bit better. So these red dots were great in ArcGIS Pro, but we're in this web map. Let's choose a, a better looking symbology. So what I'll do for my hydrant layer is I'll click on the circle square triangle button here. And this lets me change my symbology. And for all my fire hydrants, I want them to have the same symbol. So under number two here, I'll click on options for location single symbol. And if you haven't had the chance to fool around with this, uh, there's all kinds of great symbologies that you can use in ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to utilities water here. And there's some great symbols. And I'm going to choose this one here for my fire hydrants. And I'll make it size 20. I'll press OK press OK again, then press done. And look at that, I've got some good looking fire hydrants and they have uh, a nice looking pop up to them as well. Excellent. Now I wanna start to get a little bit more fancy with this. I want to be able to have this map show me which hydrants have been inspected. But also I want it to show me which hydrants have and have not been inspected within the last year. So this will be a really easy map for me to look at that maybe uh, green fire hydrants have been inspected in the last year, red fire hydrants have not. Well, how can we do that? Well, within the ArcGIS Online space, ArcGIS Enterprise, that'll be a later video, but within the ArcGIS Online space, what I can do is I can go into the analysis button here and I'm gonna choose summarize data, join features. And what this is going to allow me to do is it's going to allow me to pull for any feature that I have on the map that's been inspected, the most recent inspection information. So assuming that a fire hydrant has been inspected multiple times over the years, this will always pull on the most recent inspection and drive your symbology. So how do we set this up? Well, my target layer is going to be my hydrants. Uh, the thing that I want to join to it for uh, question number two is the hydrant inspections table, which is already filled out for me. Uh, I'm gonna do this based on fields to match. And remember, if you remember from the first video, we have the global ID from the point layer and the GUID field from the child related table. All right, then which record is gonna be kept? Well, of you know, if there's multiple inspections over the years, uh, I only wanna have it be ordered by, that is to say showing the most recent based on the inspection day that's newest. So even if I get 10 inspection records in there, it's always gonna pull on the information that was most recently submitted. And I'll call this uh, recent hydrant inspections. Choose a good folder to save it into. Uncheck the box for use current map extent and check the box for create results as hosted feature layer view. I'll press run analysis. Now this will take a couple seconds, but it's going to give me another layer that is constantly dynamically pulling on the inspection records that we have for our fire hydrants. All right. We can see it's been added as a new layer up at the top. And in fact, if I turn off hydrants, you can actually see we have those two dots. Those two dots are, if you might recall, those two inspections that I had told you earlier that I already put in place. Now, if I wanted to see all of my inspections, I could click on the attribute table button for hydrant inspections. And here we'll see, there's those two inspection records that I had submitted. Um, note that I did an inspection in January 23rd of 2021. It's January 24th, 2021. So this was yesterday as of the recording of this video. And then there's this one that was done by Ben back in January 16th of 2020. So over a year ago. Now, if I'm concerned with fire hydrant inspections, maybe I wanna uh, have two different symbologies again. The green symbology for fire hydrants that have been inspected in the last year and a different symbology for those that have not those that need to be inspected. So that's why I have these two records here, one that has occurred within the last year and one that has not, because I'm going to use those dates 
from those most recent inspections to drive my symbology. Well, how do I do that? Well, for my recent hydrant inspections, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to click Change Style, my symbology. Very similar to what we did before, but we're going to quickly make this different. So instead of just showing my location, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and I'm going to choose New Expression. Don't have a heart attack on me. I swear this is going to be easy. But we're going to do a little bit of coding with Arcade, which is uh, Esri's kind of uh, native coding language. That's the best way I know how to describe it. But what I can do is I can write a very simple line of code that's going to take a look to determine whether an inspection has occurred within the last year or not. So here we go. I'll clear out that little line of code that's in there. And I'm going to go into just rename this. I don't like the name custom. I'm going to call this uh, Hydrant Inspection. So that's the name of my line of code here that I'm going to write. And here we go. Let's get started. So this is very simple. It's, it's just an if-then expression. So if the hydrant inspection occurred in the last year, great. If not, bad. Binary. Yes or no. How can I do that? Well, by clicking on functions on the right-hand side, I can search for IIF. And this gives me um, an if-then expression. So I'm going to click on IIF here. And you can actually see if I click on it once, it asks me for my conditional expression. That kind of controls whether something is true or false. And then what my values are going to be based on whether it's true or false. And if I have no idea what any of these things mean, I can click on the little I over here. And it actually kind of walks me through it. We'll come back to that in a couple seconds. But anyways, my conditional expression is going to be based on whether the inspection date of that most recent inspection occurred within the last year or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete out the conditional expression. And then I'm going to click on date difference here. Well, date difference, which is this little guy here that's highlighted for me, just does a really simple calculation. What it does is it calculates the amount of time between any two points in time. In this case, I'm going to have it be that my ending date for this is right now. So I'll type in NOW, open parentheses, close parentheses. And my starting date for this is going to be when the inspection took place for any feature on the map. So we'll delete out starting date. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into global over here. And this is where I can pull on the different attributes for any one of my features. So I'll scroll down in here until I find my inspection date. There it is. That is the date of the most recent inspection that we just got. And so this is constantly calculating the amount of time between now and that inspection date. And my units are, and this is where our functions again come in handy, that little I button I was talking about earlier. If I click on this, it tells me my units, this block right here, I can do milliseconds, seconds, minutes, and years is what I want. So inside of single quotes, what I will do is single quotes and type in years, just like that. And it has to be written just like what it says right here. All right, so this is calculating the amount of time for me, oops, the amount of time for me between now and the inspection date in years. And if it is less than one, that is to say the date difference is less than one year, that's good. That means our asset has been inspected. And I'll put this inside of uh, a set of quotes. And if it has not occurred within the last year, the time is not less than one year, that is to say greater than one year, I'm going to say that this is requires inspection. Just like that. So if then expression that calculates the amount of time, if it's less than one year, it's been inspected. Um, and then if it's false, greater than a year, it needs inspection. We'll press OK. And now what we'll see is down here, my hydrant inspections now has those two values being reflected for me. So I can come in here now and I can symbolize my inspected and requires inspected. So for inspected, I'll make this be, um, instead of my utilities water, I'm going to go up to uh, uh, government here. I really like some of these symbols. I'll choose this nice looking uh, fire hydrant if I can uh, find it. There we go. Green fire hydrant means it's been inspected. We'll make this guy a little bit bigger, 24. And if it requires inspection, I'll change my symbology to be I don't know, something red, something kind of harsh that stands out a little bit. I could choose the red fire hydrant that I just went past, or 
I'll choose this, uh, no, it's in here somewhere. There we go, like a red exclamation point. Something like that, 25 as well, and press OK. I'll press OK again, and press Done. And now look at this. Now I have a very simple two-tone symbology on my map. I can tell you without having to look into any attribute table or anything like that, that this fire hydrant has been inspected in the last year. This one has not. And as we go through and perform additional inspections, this symbology is going to update and be reflected for us. A really great way that we can uh, pull on the attributes that are collected when the inspection workflows take place. So um, anything else I wanna clean up here? Well, there's some things I can do. What I'm going to set in here is for my table, I'm gonna set what's known as a refresh interval, and we'll make this 0 0.5. And what this is going to do, and I'll also set it for my recent hydrant inspections, is this will cause the map to automatically refresh these two layers every 0.5 minutes or 30 seconds. So as inspections are done out in the field, this information is going to automatically update for us. So I'll go ahead, I'll press the save button, and we need to save this map. So I'm gonna call this uh, hydrant uh, inspection map. I need to give it a name, so I'm just gonna copy my, uh, I need to give it a, a tag, so I'm gonna copy my title and just paste that in there. Make sure it's saved in a good folder, and press save map. So with that, what do we do? Well, we took that layer that we, those layers that we created before with the, with the table and the hydrant points, and we added an extra field into them. Uh, we gave it actually a yes or no value, which is going to play a huge role a little bit in the future. We cleaned up the pop-up that we saw for the original hydrants layer. Uh, we created this thing called a join view that's going to allow us to drive our symbology based on recent inspections. And then we uh, were able to symbolize the data based on those recent inspections. And so we have a map. And in our next video, what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to make it accessible out in the field. So that way our uh, field crews can work with this map that we've created, allowing us to share information and maybe replace what you have as a paper workflow with the digital workflow. So again, as always, looking forward to the next video. Thanks for watching.